Welcome, Welcome to Shade, to in, the Shade city. in the City. I'm Trees. It snows. And today we are getting right back into the never ending story that is before the 90 days. This is now episode, I think, 14. My notes say it's episode 14. When it's going to end, I'm not sure, but you just made me think of Lamb Chops. This is the song. <laughs> yeah, it does. And, and that's what was going through my face. But anyway, so yeah, y'all. And apparently, there's a fool born every day. So let's get into it and let's get shady and talk about these fools. squad i had to remind y'all because i feel like the last time we put this up it was like maybe the first or second review that we did and we always refer to hansen and i don't know if sometimes you really get it but shade squad me hansen here on the top left now there's clearly some similarities and i just want y'all to know and jasmine this is the man that you chose that's all i'm saying so We get back to wherever the hell they are. I can't remember the name now. (laughs) Um, But Jasmine and Gino apparently had another argument. Um, And since then, Jasmine has not seen him and she is very upset. Now, I can understand being concerned. I'm not going to go in on you about that. However, then she says, although she's suffering, um, she's going to go look for him. And Gino says he feels he's being attacked over and over and it's getting on his nerves. Nigga, you ain't got no nerve, clearly, (laughs) clearly. When you sent the pictures to the other bitch, you had no nerve. So the fact that you have the nerve to be upset and be annoyed because of the shit that you got yourself into, well, that sounds like a personal problem, Gino. But um, anyway, so- Regardless, uh, Jasmine said that, you know, she wanted to hurt him the way he hurt her, but, you know, she is forgiving him for, well, they forgave each other. Um, they forgave each other. And she said, you know, she doesn't want to give up on him. Um, and she loves him from his bald head to his toes. Um, even though he's weird and creepy sometimes. I'm, I'm glad she knows. I'm, I'm glad she knows. It's not like she's just oblivious she to this. She signed up for. Top left. I can't be mad. I can't be mad at her. But she said she's not going to give up on him. She got more hair she gonna, than Gino. She going she gonna to stick beside him. She going to stick beside him is what she said. Um, she just wants it to just be you. I'm sorry. Um, she said, I just want it to be you and me. No crazy exes. And you don't want me as an ex. And you know what? She said it was a joke. But I believe her. I believe her. I, I can believe see this bitch going ape shit crazy. For real. So they decided to have a fresh seen start. You've already seen glimpses of it. Exactly. And she ain't even the ex yet. So um, they decided to have a fresh start. And um you know, Gino is you all see here teary-eyed, about him, right? And they're all hugging all it out, talking about, "Well, I'm, I'm glad she gave me another chance." And she apologized to him, but then said, "I forgive you for your stupidity." I said, "I don't know. I just, I feel like when you're right in a situation, you're right." And I don't believe in motherfucker like telling people they're right just so you can avoid conflict. I just don't. I'm not here for it. So I was a little disappointed in Jasmine because I felt like the only thing I will say is when you say you forgive somebody, yes, you're supposed to forgive them. So in that right, if she was going to forgive him, but it's only been a day or two, the girl's texting her about sharing her titty pics. I have a right to still be upset. And the fact that you say it gets on your nerves, I would have been done. No, I, I, I don't think that's what it was. I think it was he understood that she was still upset about that. It was that she switched from being mad about that to being mad about the email. 
and the trick. Okay. So that, that's how he got the upper hand. That's how he got the upper hand. Because that's it was like, how okay, he got the. You were mad about that. I'm, I I get it. You're mad about that, but now you're attacking me, or making me feel attacked because now you're coming at me with some shit that was even before you. That's how he got the upper hand. Look at this full circle moment. Go ahead, Nails. Go ahead. Usman meets up with my two favorite people, y'all. Bud Mus and Slam T. So <laughs> we see them meeting up at the resort and Usman is like, can you believe that she spilled water on my body? This body? <laughs> Not my body. Oh my, my body God. over my body. What did, what did you your say? Body body all over my body. It's your body. <laughs> you so stupid. I'm just saying. <laughs> So, oh my god. Basically, they um they're shocked that Kim would be so disrespectful. No, they're not. No, they're not. They tried to tell him and they tell him, man, we tried to tell you to lead this crazy old woman. They feel like she, they're not compatible. And he needs to basically probably go find Zara's number. Um, but it don't sound like Zara out here buying PlayStations and MacBooks. So he, he's like, well, she wants me to do some grand gesture and I don't know what to do. And they're like, if she wants this now, bruh, it's going to be consistent all the time. He's always going to be asking you to show your love. Exactly. And he's like, well, I need to take time to think about it. And then we see Kim down here below packing and she's in a frenzy and she's like, I'm not gonna stay here and da da da. Now my thing was, I thought you were supposed to leave last night. So you are clearly giving yourself time because you want him to reach out to you or whatever the case may be. So, or maybe this was later that day. So I'll give her that. Maybe she was packing her bags to leave that night and was hoping that she'd give him a couple hours to let him figure it the out. The cameras were coming. So she started packing her bags. Or that too. So, <laughs> so no, so basically she's, um in her shit together and production's like well what are you gonna do she's like i'm gonna go home and then surprisingly uzman sends her a text and is like hey come meet me at the bar and she's like well, what do i say i don't know what to do and i'm like bitch you just said that you she got so giddy like it just aggravated me you were talking about how you're leaving and you're going home you can't deal with this shit soon as he sends one motherfucking text talking about some come meet me She's all giddy. She can't think. She's, give me a second. Give me a second to think. Give me a second. Kim, Kim, Kim. What is it? Um, Hard to get? No, that's not what you're giving. She's not <laughs> playing hard to get. No, she's not. <laughs> so Hamza and Memphis. It is the start of the wedding celebration. And so here we are. And we know Memphis where we left off last episode. Memphis left because she needed time to think because the lawyer told her she was not going to be able to get a prenup. So she was taking time to think on whether she was going to postpone everything or just say fuck it. And um, you know, I actually think that's probably the smartest thing she's done all um, all, all season. season. She didn't want the influence of the family, you know, not even just Hamza, you know, the mother, the sister, whoever. And, you know, clearly the wedding's coming up. The cer celebration was the next day. Then the wedding, I believe, is the next day after that. Um, and she didn't want the influence. She wanted to be able to think on her own. So she didn't mention it to anyone. Took the time away to uh, get her thoughts together and came back. I think that's probably the smartest shit she has done all season. Kudos. Kudos to Mr. Wants. So Hamza is still unclear as to why she left. And we see him sitting out on the balcony looking like a fresh John B. Just, you know, just that's what it gives. I'm just saying. What I did see, you just say? Looking like what? I said looking like a fresh John B. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see? No. <laughs> you don't see it. Girl, I just want to love you, love you. <laughs> that's what Hamza gives you, Tree. That's, that's what he gives me. Girl, you better stop. That might be somebody's husband now. You better cut it out. <laughs> so basically Memphis heads back and we just see 
production talk, talking to her and they're like, well, what are you going to do? And she's like, well, it's going to be an uncomfortable conversation, but I'm going to have to let him know that I'm not getting married, at least not right now, um, until I can get this paperwork done. So we're going to have to hold off on this celebration. And then apparently Hamza's sister, uh, Rawa, show, shared, I guess, a video with her of what was going on at the house, which is what we see top left, where they're like dancing around the house, celebrating. It was, they was lit. They was lit, y'all. Well, I guess for them, they were lit because I'm, I don't think they drink. So I, you know, they were lit for them, but, um, but their no, definition. what'd you say? I said their definition of lit. Right. Um, but, and so she walks in the house to have this conversation with Hamza. And that was kind of awkward when you got the whole family in the living room having a fiesta and um, you got to have a serious conversation and tell them ain't no fiesta because I'm canceling the wedding. So that should be interesting. And um, well, I guess we'll see how Miss Memphis handles it. So um, Mahagani mm -hmm. is meeting up with her dad. They're having a conversation about Ben. She's discussing how she feels so embarrassed that Ben um, never showed up for breakfast and um, talking through chat, it was totally different. I guess he was totally different, um, a totally different person. She lets her dad know that, you know, she likes older men because of the maturity, but after Ben didn't show up for breakfast, she felt like that was super immature. So, And um, she her also said that Ben was not who, or she felt Ben was not the person that he portrayed to her online. What did you just say about glass houses, Trace? I'm just saying. Me and Nels were just having a conversation say? about Memphis and Hamza and how she got on him about his planning, but yet she didn't plan all this prenup stuff before she got on the plane to go marry him. And I said, it's always the ones in glass houses that throw stones. So yes, here is Mahugani throwing stones. But in she a glass beach in a glass beach house. The glass, glass beach, house. beach house. The glass the air glass Airbnb. Airbnb. House. Right. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Well, her dad lets her know, you know, you need to investigate. And um, you know, he gives her a, a some a, a few tips. He's just like, I don't want my daughter to suffer without having spoke to me and taken my advice first. And also uses a Bible verse, you know, to get her on board. Like, um and look, she says she loved Jesus. Right. Um, basically telling her to take her dad's advice. So she did ask him, you know, are you going to meet up with Ben? And he's like, I don't know. But this is for, this is, look, this is 90 Day Fiance, okay? I'm sure they're going to meet up. They, 90 Day Fiance comes with the drama. We are here with Jasmine and Gino, and they are trying to reconnect. So they go on a nice little excursion off in, it looked like the woods, but apparently they're going to a hot spring. I said, okay, I would do the hot spring. But that's why I don't drink spring water, y'all. <laughs> I need purified. Um, so they are chilling in the hot spring. And Gino is so comfortable and they're having such a good time. He even takes his head off at one point. Which I was like, wow. Because he, he figured she, she already he did it. the whole time with his hat on. So that's what's so crazy. And then he got out the water and he took his hat off. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so it just goes to show their comfortability level. And you, you could even see that Jasmine smiled knowing that he was that comfortable um, and secure with her to do that. Um, they get back to the resort and basically he takes her out into like this beautiful garden area. And he lets her know that, you know, like, I love you. Thank you for sticking with me. And, you know, through all my bullshit, you know, the usual stuff that a man tells you about before he's about to propose. Um, and so, so then he gets down on one knee and unfortunately I didn't get the ring and it's that non-important that you guys aren't mix, missing anything. So it was no need to get it. Um, well, she didn't even get to see the ring either because he has the ring facing him. Like he proposed in his damn self. I did think it was cute that they, they were in the rain and yes, I, don't know. I did think that he was got cute. down on his one knee in the rain. I thought that was like, okay. It was cute. It was that it was, was it was it was because yeah, it couldn't have been a black girl, unfortunately. She had an umbrella. Oh, did she? 
I mean, she took it down, but she had one. <laughs> okay, right, right. So I think it was hilarious that um, the mom is asking him, how are things going with Mike? And she's like, ah, good. Her sister snitched her out real quick. No, no, it's not. No, she's been fighting with Mike, no. She's been fighting with him. She's being tough on him. And the mom was like, what? Like, why? Like, are y'all getting married? My husband was like, I don't know. I don't know if we're getting married. He's filthy. And the mom is letting her know, like, basically, like, bitch, you need to grow the fuck up, okay? Because he cares about you. He cares about the about kids. kids. Like, you know, and he can create a great home for y'all. And he has shown you unconditional love. So basically, they're both telling her, you know, you need to have patience. You need to have patience with him. And she's just like, eh, you know, okay. So, um, like, she thinks he's filthy as hell because she told him his shoes were dirty and he put them in the washing machine and she was like, that's just filthy. I must have missed that part. No, she did say that. She said she thought that was filthy. That is filthy. That's where you put your clothes. That's fucking disgusting. Well, that's what he did and that's what she told her mom and that's when her mom you know what i would have oh i'll tell you off camera go ahead ahead. (laughs) so um yeah and no i mean that pretty nails pretty much sums it up um and then mike sits down with jimena's mother and is basically trying to talk to her and she tells him that like Jimena's never really had, first of all, she tells him she feels bad for him because he's a good person and he doesn't deserve. And she shouldn't be that cold to him. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And then she says that basically, please be patient with her um, because this is her first serious relationship where Mike is somewhat relieved because he's like, oh, well, this is my first real relationship too. So um, he feels- I don't understand why he was happy that he's her first real relationship. Nigga, she's treating me like shit. He, because I think he feels like, oh, maybe if she never knew, like if we're navigating this together, because we both have never been in something so serious, like yeah, if she was better at it, then yeah. But to me, that would be like, oh, that's the reason for all this shit. And it's a red fucking well, flag. No, that's me. what he said. That's why he said knowing that this is he ended it with knowing that this is her uh first serious relationship, it explains a lot. Then that makes it a red flag. Cause if you ain't navigating it the way I'm navigating, guess what? Bitch, you need to t- you need to have another test dummy, not me. I agree. So we are back at Hamza and Memphis. Memphis walks into the house and the whole celebration is going down and they is they lit. Like I said, y'all, they it, lit. Um, everybody's happy to see her. Everyone greets her. But Hamza did notice a difference um, ever since she got back from the hotel. He noticed something wrong with his woman. Right. Okay. She's not her usual self. But um, they pull around a horse and carriage, which I thought was dope. You know, uh, and this little get up in the left, the left picture on the top left. And I was loving it. I was like, I need to get me some of that. That was real cute. It's real cute. Jesus Christ. So they have a horse and carriage, or as she called it, a horse and buggy downstairs waiting for her. And then I guess it's a normal thing for all the women to go to the bathhouse and, you know, have like a spa day. I said, okay, I'm for it. I'm all about it. I love it. So they go to the bathhouse. Um, I'm assuming they had a great time because they didn't really show much there. Um, then when they get back to the house, it looks like Hamza is getting his, uh, <clears throat> getting a, a haircut. She goes into the room. She wants to call her mom and tell her about the conversation with the lawyer. And she lets her know that, you know, it's too late to get a prenup. You know, I have to get a postnup because we have already started celebrating and the marriage, the wedding is tomorrow. And her mom is like, no, 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 absolutely not. You know, Basically, bitch, you should have secure your business before you left. I'm just saying. But um, she lets her know, like, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. So her mom is just basically like, well, you know, do what's best. If you did, yeah, exactly. If you went all the way out there and didn't have that together before you got out there, then, oh, well, good luck. All right. So I've been dying to get to this part. We know you have. Because uh, Nails is in denial. 
About what? About Ben's stupidity. Who's not stupid? Oh, she's just the ultimate scammer. She is a scammer. And deflecting. Okay. Deflecting the scam. Oh, deflecting the scam. Um, so guys, we see Ben and he is supposed to be meeting up with Mahugani's father and mother after he stood them up for breakfast. Um, he's not optimistic about how the meeting is going to go. He's um, also not apologetic because he said, apologetic. He, he said he didn't know that they was going to be there and he felt some type of way that he didn't get no response from Mahogany. Right. I feel him. Oh, God. He needed to clear his head. Whatever. So, um, so basically, he notices that they're late and Mahogany shows up to say her dad could not make it, but he did write him a letter. You know who would do that, right? You know who would write you a letter if I couldn't cut you out in person. Well, yeah, she basically says Nails got to the end of it. Well, damn. Talk about <laughs> pacing yourself. <laughs> so basically, yeah, she shows up, gives him a letter. And then Ben's like, you know, basically she lets us know in a confessional, her dad didn't show up because he's he felt it was super disrespectful for Ben to not show up for breakfast. So when Mahogany asked him why, he explains, basically, you didn't respond to my text messages and I was trying to, basically I was playing love games and I wanted to show you better than I could tell you. And I didn't realize that at the same time your parents was there and I was, I was effing myself over. So he says he doesn't feel wanted by Mahogany. And yeah, he said he wanted her to miss him. And she's like, why? And he's like, because I want to make, I want to feel wanted. And that was some love. Games. Like, oh my God, he's more I immature than me. <laughs> at least he's the, an old man who wants some love, girl. Look, at least the scammer got some sense. You got to think about it. She's a if, scammer, she was she really, have sense. if she was really a scammer, she would have kept going along with this plot and making him think that she really likes him. Well, no, because she didn't know that the motherfucker sex. would come there for real. I don't know. The hell? She don't want to keep on going through with it and then his ass keep on popping up. Well, Mahogany says she feels that Ben is not the same person that he was in the chat. And that basically, like Nell says, she only came to drop off the letter and she really didn't want to be there. So Ben says, I hope it is what it is. Bitch, go. <laughs> and that's what happened. We're back with Jasmine and Gino. He, as we know, we left off. He popped the question with the ring held towards him. So she couldn't even see it as Nail said. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. He did not say things that normal people say when they propose. What he said was, I've never felt so loved before. And I'm the happiest man. Why are you not expressing your love for this woman? Versus talking about how she makes you feel. That's it. That's all. That's all I want to say. Uh, so basically, Jasmine says yes, um, which we knew she was going to because she loves him from his bald head to his nasty toes. Uh, and but she says yes, even though she can't see the ring. Um, when he asked her if she likes the ring, uh, which is the picture down here at the bottom right, and she says, well, I don't know if it's because my fingers are small. She said, but it seems kind of big. But then she said, I, I don't even know if this is a diamond. I love Gino. I'm sorry. Gino looks at her and he says, well, I'm not an expert on diamonds, so I, I can't tell you either. I said... Like, motherfucker, I don't know either. So you don't know what you bought? You can't you tell me if, it, if it's even one carat, half a carat. Is it cubic zirconia? Can you tell me? What he, he, were he paid again? Like $900 or something like that? What he paid? Do you remember? Yeah, I think he paid like 900 or something like that. I think it should. I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be that big. Or I don't I don't know. I don't remember how big it was. But uh, she said it's big. Um, I would hope. For nine hundred dollars, you bought a real diamond. 
because you could have definitely got one a cubic sconia for way cheaper i'm just right, saying exactly um yes. she basically uh, says, happy couple they're engaged congratulations <laughs> but she does say you know she she believes that they're toxic um they know that they're it sounds crazy but love isn't logical neither is this union okay shade squad so we see ben and this lovely man with his shirt off here now uh ben wakes up ready for the awkward i think he said three to almost four hour car ride back to san bartolo with your girl um oh my mic is here sorry can you hear me guys can you hear me? yes um the so, mic does not do anything trace we still hear you i know it's the project <laughs> right um so basically he's ready for the aqua car a car ride back to san bartolo he goes to knock on her door and this gentleman answers and here is why you have been and the question marks because <laughs> mahogany is nowhere to be found um Ben runs down the stairs with his luggage down to the front desk. And he's like, did some young girl and- oh, he, he looks for her car. Well, first of all, let me just say this. Now I know when I do travel to another country, these motherfuckers do not have the same security that America has because they just giving out this girl information when she- Well, it was technically, it was his room. It was his room. So he's really asking questions about his own room. I guess. <laughs> but um, they would do that in America too. If you bought both of the rooms, guess what? It's then your I room. guess, yes, maybe you could get some information. I guess. <laughs> so um, the guy at the front desk lets him know that Mahugani checked out last night. He goes outside, looks for her car to get confirmation that she left when the man just told him that she left oh i thought no he checked for the car first i well maybe he did i feel like he, whatever point is she gone y'all Mah mahogany is gone and um he's so upset and he's like well i need a car back to san bartolo which is not even by lima which is where he has to fly from apparently sir, san bartolo is three hours away and he said lima is five, five. hours away so the guy at the front desk lets him know that it's going to be a thousand. I forgot what he told him, uh, which. But it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, two hundred and fifty U.S. dollars. So um, he basically has no choice but to book the car service because. Um, yeah, he got left, y'all. But he don't want to be stranded. He's basically like, this is such a re overreaction. And she's really showing her age. And maybe she is because. Maybe that's my age too, because that's some shit I would have did. Nigga, what I told you, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I ain't going so, back to the hotel. I need to hit one of nails. She got the dipping, <laughs> but she said she was leaving. It ain't my fault. You misunderstood. She said, and if I didn't even want to be around you to talk to you about what was in the letter, why would I want to ride with you in the car for three hours? You should have known that. But again, this is. Ben being hopeful, just like he woke up hopeful and bruh. I'll give you hopeful. I'll give you that word. That word is more appropriate. I'll give you hopeful. Stupid? Okay. Yes. We get to the beach. We see Kimberly all dressed up. Is that what you call it? For her, yes. Looking for Usman. And she's like, where is he? She's sitting at the table by herself and, you know, clearly... It's been set up for her. So she's wondering where, you know, where he is. And he comes out giving his little performance. I said, okay, Uzman, get it. Was it for her or was it for, for the show to get more publicity? Don't do that to Uzman. Don't do that to Uzman. You so, said it first. I'm just saying. So I'm not in denial about why he's here. I know why he's here. But um, still, he gave his little private concert. To Kimberly, and, um, and apparently this showed how much he loved her, because he did for you what he does for everybody. And then they exchange, you know, she gives him an apology for you know cursing at him and whatever, and they sit down and talk about what life is going to be like once they're no longer together and having to go back to video chats. And then Usman tells her he wants her to 
fly to Nigeria to meet his mama. Even though it didn't go well the first time with baby girl Lisa, he would like Kimberly to go meet his mama in Nigeria. And I said, let me tell you something. Usman know how to milk a cow. That's all I'm going to say. Don't be surprised if you see them on the other way and she's flying to Nigeria to visit him. Any thoughts, Nels, on the love connection between Usman and Kimbali? I choose not to share my thoughts. <laughs> well, TLC be knowing what they doing. They save the best for life. <laughs> the thing is, oh my God. I guess if you gonna keep <sighs> us going for what? It'll be 15 episodes at this point. Jesus but, uh, Christ. Y'all. So, so let's get ahead, into it. So, so, Mike and Hitman are sitting in the car. You know, he's telling her, he's complimenting her. You look pretty. And she's like, what about me? She's like, yeah, the same. Oh, my God. I'm going to miss you. Miss you cold. Yes, you cold no. blooded. Yeah. You cold blooded. So he's like, you know, we're going to have fun playing pool. Apparently, she don't know how. And he's like, yeah, I'll teach you. Um, then he brings up the conversation that he had with her mom. Oh, your mom told me this is your first real relationship. She said, lie. The lies you tell. I said, God damn. She said she had plenty. She just gets bored. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. So in the confessional, she's talking about how she just wants to have fun. And, um, you know, she don't know if Mike is the man for her. So, He's trying to teach her how to shoot pool. She's like, nigga, don't follow me. I'm going to shoot how the fuck I want to shoot. Uh, like, yeah. I think because there was a bunch of dudes in the pool hall. She's like, just look, you fucking on my game, homie. Like, stay away from me. So then she's like, look, let's go sit down. So they sit down and he's like, isn't this cool? Like, isn't this fun? You know, just us having a good time together. And she's like, no, you know, because my, my kids come before you and like, it would have been great, you know, to hang out with them. So he's just like, what the fuck like bitch like you're not giving nothing like so he's like okay so you don't love me and you need space like I can't help but think that like your feelings change like your feelings will change like you know if I wasn't paying you stop giving you money exactly and she's like wouldn't stop wouldn't stop we'll be friends you don't pay my rent. You don't pay. You don't sit. You stop sending me money. And that'll be it. Now what? So he's like, okay, well, then I need everything that I paid for in your house. She's like, take it. I don't need it. I said, don't and I it. love what she says. She's like, if basically, if Mike thought he was the only man that I was getting money from, then he really does not know me at all. I said, ooh. And who told him that? Uh, Nelsie it's and uh, the other dude exactly so and, she's and like, his dad and his grandpa so she's like okay we're done and like i'm i'm dead ass serious he gets up starts running away like paul did and takes off and she she sits there crying and they're like you know do you think that you'll regret this decision she's like no i don't know maybe it was because he was upset i don't know why she started crying but um yeah she's 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 done she's done with mike now, in the preview for the next episode, okay, y'all, he says she, apparently, she's like, she's like, no, like, I don't want shit from you. You going to sleep in a hotel? He said, no, I paid to rent this house. I ain't going nowhere. He's like, she is a cold, what did he say? She's a cold mean, blooded. cold, hard bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> God damn, my then we find out that um, uh, Hanson was supposed to be asking um, Jasmine for a prenup. I don't think yeah, that's going to go over well. Um, Usman and uh, Kimberly. Kimberly's about to leave and um, apparently Usman don't want to give her a kiss goodbye before they leave. I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know. I don't know what's what's going on with that, but she, of course, she got pissed off. Who else was there? Who else is there? Is there anybody else? Am I forgetting somebody? Oh, Ben is to be meeting up with Mahogany, trying to meet up with Mahogany again. Or Mahogany. yes, before I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the fuck going on with that. He, 
Fool me once, motherfucker. Fool me once. You showing your ass now. Showing your ass. Thank you guys so, yes, so much guys. for tuning in to another review of Before the 90 Days. And as we stated, the saga is continuing to continue. So, it's continuing to continue. <laughs> so I guess we'll be here for it next Sunday. It's a marathon, y'all. It ain't a sprint. It's a marathon. It ain't a marathon. <laughs> That's what love is, right? Uh, please make sure that you like before you head out and you subscribe and hit the notification bell and please make sure that you are following us on all social media platforms and we will catch you guys next sunday for another review of episode 15 y'all there's a reason why i'm stressing these numbers episode 15 is that where we at Jeez. yes next week will be 15 so we will catch y'all for episode 15 of before the 90 days have a good night Good night. Front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Ah, front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Hey.